Hello, in this video we're looking at Khan Academy and looking at the trigonometry section, specifically equations and identities, and I believe the third or so uh, practice module, which says solve sinusoidal equations. So here, let's do a couple of these problems together, and what you're going to notice in them is that there are multiple answers. So let's do the first one, and we'll talk about why there are multiple answers and importantly how to find them. Here, uh, what do we know? We know that we're dealing with radians. They often might switch back and forth. So, and we're going to use our calculator here, so let's just check that. We'll clear up some old stuff, go to mode. Right now I'm in degrees, so I'm going to go down, hit enter, and go into radian mode. All right, now I'm in radian mode. And the sine of, of some angle is negative 0.55. So that tells me that I can do some algebra here. I have the sine of x, and I want to find the inverse sine. I want to find what angle has a ratio of negative 0.55. So I, what I do is I take the inverse or arc sine of both sides of my equations, which feels like a really cool thing to do in algebra. We don't need that negative sign there. The, arc, the inverse sine of the sine of x equals the inverse sine of negative 0.55. So all I just did was took the inverse sine of both sides and a function and its inverse essentially cancel each other out and what's left is the input, in this case x. So the inverse of the inverse sine of the sine of x is just x and that means that x equals the inverse sine of um, negative 0.55. I added a 0 in there, I'm not sure why, so I'll put a 0 here too. And this just shows us that in all of these problems, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do to solve for x here is take the inverse sine or cosine of whatever ratio we're given here. So let's do that. So we, in the calculator, just hit second sine negative 0.55, and it will give us usually the principal angle uh, in radian measure. So it's negative 0.5823. So I'm going to write down, and you can do some estimation here. X is about, and we just saw that. We don't need the whole thing, sorry. Negative 0.5823. So negative 0 0.5823 radians. These are in radians. And you can see that uh, out of our choices, the only thing close so far is choice C, and that is one of the answers. And... The idea, you, you can see what they're adding here. They're adding n times 2 pi. So x could be this measure in radians or any number of, this is an integer, n is positive or negative whole numbers, any number of rotations. Remember, 2 pi is a full rotation around the circle. Um, and you'll get the same sign. And that's, that's fairly intuitive. Once you get past all these crazy things in trigonometry, all they're saying is, listen, if you have an angle, in this case, for many of these problems, I find it's very important to know where you are, like what, how to approximate these radian measures. So, because here, negative 0.5823, so, um, you can convert it into degrees. If you remember how to do that, I'll show you real quick. You could take that and multiply it by 180 over pi. That will convert it into degrees. That's one way. So about negative 33 degrees. But also a rough estimate will help you. You don't need an exact measure. I know that, for example, negative, this is, so here's pi. Oops. Here's pi radians. So this is um, pi over 2 radians. And negative, if I go in this direction, usually this is referred to as 3 pi over 2. But I can say it's negative pi over 2. It's, it's negative 90 degrees in the other direction. And I know that pi over 2 is about 1.57. So this is less, I should say, than a turn of negative pi over two. So I just, I'm estimating that it's about here. When I draw this out, I don't need to know it's, that it's, I don't need to know as much as, as, as about negative 33 degrees. I just need to know, is it in this quadrant or a different one? So I compare it to this, which is negative pi over two radians, and that's about negative 1.5 or seven or so. So we're not that far. Why do I tell you that? Because, well, first of all, all this answer is saying is, listen, if I rotate around the circle two pi radians of full rotation, I get back to the same point, and I, I have the same sign. I can go in 
a counterclockwise, which is usually the positive direction, or a clockwise, which is the negative direction, which goes back to the way, of course, the sun rises and sets, right? We Counterclockwise is positive because that matches the way the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, but that's a side note. Okay, why is it important to draw this? Because remember that sine corresponds to the y value of the point on the unit circle or the height of a triangle drawn uh, with a vertex at the origin. Either way, there's an angle over here. So let's talk about what we can do to find uh, the angle that goes through the point that has the same height or sine value as this point right here. There are lots of options. Typically what I do is I go pi radians plus this distance, this angle turn right here, which is 0.5823 radians. It's the same thing as this angle right here, but instead of being negative, it's positive. That's one way to do it. And I think a, a more direct way to get one of these answers, excuse me, right here, would be to say from the negative perspective, what is this angle right here that gets you to the same spot? So how far do we have to turn? Well, we have to turn, uh, instead of turning a full pi radians, uh, negative pi radians, it's really negative um, pi plus 0.5823, right? So if I go to my calculator here, it's um, t the amount of turning I have to do is negative pi plus 0.5823 about, about negative 2.56, which is right here. And don't get lost in the negatives and positives and how you have to do it. They're just presenting the answer in one form. Just recognize that if you're calling this a negative direction, right? So the way I decided to count it is to go this way, pi, negative pi radians, and then back 0.5823 radians. The direction I'm choosing is either a negative or a positive direction, and then how far I'm turning in radians. And as long as I end up at this spot right here, you've got the right measure. And all of these problems are somewhat similar to this. Uh, there are some slight variations. In this one right here, they specify an interval. So let's just jump right to it here. Let's find the inverse cosine of this. So here we are in degrees. So I go to mode, down, down, over, to degree, quit out. And now what I'm going to do is hit second cosine negative 0.4. And I get about 113 degrees, okay? So x is about, and you can get away with a lot of estimation here, 113 degrees. And I start to draw this out to get a sense of what my answers might be. So 113 degrees is about, let's say here. And cosine refers to the x value, right? So if we look at a unit circle, all right? So the x value of this point is the cosine. So then where is there another point on the circle that has the same x value? It's down here, right? These two points have the same x value. They're on the, at the same x ordinate right there. Okay, so how do we find that? Well, we turn 113 degrees in this direction to get to this point. So what we could do is say, well, let's go 113 degrees in this direction. And that will get us to this angle right here, or this, this ray right here. So um, I'm going to say it's 113 degrees, actually be 113 degrees, plus 360 degrees any number of times in either direction. And it could also be negative 113. And because of the, of the nature of cosine, you can also off, often get these opposite angles like this, um, plus 360 times n. Now, these answers, though, we have to find angles between 180 and 720. So what I advise is to make a little list. I start off with, um, not 180, I start off with 113. That's my first group of angles right here. And I just keep adding 360. So I'm going to write down everything that's in our interval. Plus 360. I get 473 plus 360. 833 too big. So... 473, 833, and 833 is too big, 113 is too small. They only want between 180 and 720. So we've got our first angle here. And we're getting, we approximated so we get fairly close. The other one, we've got negative 113. We start there. And we start with negative 113, and then add 360. 
and we get 247. Okay, that works, 247. And that's this angle right here. And then plus 360 again. Oops. So plus 360. We get 607, which is this angle here. And then if we added 360 again, it would be about uh, 967, which is too big. It's above our range. So these are our three angles. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, we'll do this one, then we'll finish th with a nice quick one. So in this one, it's the same idea, except the interval is in radians. So for me, personally, what I like to do is first calculate these things to see what they are in decimal form. So I've got 3 pi divided by 2. It's about 4.71. Okay, so I'm going from about 4.71 radians, inclusively, to... Um, what is that? 9 pi over 2. So 9 times pi over 2. So about 14.13. So all of our answers need to be in this uh, domain right here. Okay, so those are all of our x values. And the sine is 0.65, and we are in radians. Let's make sure we go to radians. Mode down to radians. Quit out. Second sine of 0.65, it's about 0 0.7075 radians. Okay, so let's set this up, quick sketch. 0.707, it's about, let's say here, it's in this quadrant. So it's 0 0.707 radians. And again, going back to the idea of how we think about trig on a unit circle here, right? There is a point, or a meter unit circle, and the y value of that point is the sine. So there must be an angle over here that has the same value. And the rule for sine is you can just quickly say, see it here. It's what is that angle? Well, it's from from the x-axis here over to this spot, and that's a full pi radians. Remember, if you turned all the way to 180, that's pi radians minus whatever this angle is. All right. So in general. If you want uh, two angles that are equal, you take the sine of one angle and the sine of pi minus that angle, and you get the same result. And you can see that happening in this picture right here. So one of the angles is 0 0.707. The other one, I'll color code, I guess, in blue from here to here, going to this ray, is represented by pi minus 0 0.707. And what is that? Second pi minus... Um, 0 0.707, 0 0.707, so at 2.43 radians. And so you, you, if you were generalizing, you would say x could be about 0 0.707 plus 2 pi times n, and x could also be, it's about 2.43 radians plus 2 pi times n. But we need to make sure our answers are within this, uh, between these two values right here. So 0.707 too small, 2.43 too small. So let's make up a list where we're adding groups of 2 pi radians. So I'm going to go up to my original here. I have it saved. And then plus 2 pi. Hit enter. We get 6.99. OK, that works. It's between 4.71 and 14.3. And then we keep going. We add 2 pi radians again, plus 2 pi radians is 13.27. And that works, right? That's in our range right there. So if I scroll down, here's our choice. And then I'm done in that, because if I add 2 pi to this, I go over. And the other one, though, I start at 2.43. OK, and I think I have the exact value still on the calculator. I'm going to use that. There it is. OK, so that plus 2 pi is 8.717. OK, 8.717, and I see that choice right here. And then plus 2 pi again, and we get 15 on the dot. Pretty much is too big, so we stop there. All right, so that's it. Um, these are our three answers that would work. And then let's finish off with a quick one. Sometimes you get lucky with problems like this. Why are we lucky here? Because the cosine is 1. Where? 
where is the x value equal? Remember, cosine is the x value. Where is the x value equal to 0? Well, it happens at 0 degrees and then any 360 to it. So 0, 360. You can go the other direction, negative 360, 720, so on and so forth. And they want all the angles between 270 and 810, which are just these two choices right here, right? Um, so in this case, we're just going to pick 360 and 720, and we're done. All right, thank you.